So the quahog itself, it's got a purplish uh, inner, inside to the shell. Uh, the outer bark, as we call it, of the shell is uh, fairly white in complexion. The purple part is what we call the suquahog, and that was the dark shell clam. Quahog being the word that derives from our traditional word for this this uh, material here. Suquahog is where you get the word quahog. So that actually describes the purple part. Wampum peak, as uh, the word wampum derives from, was usually referring to the white part of the beak. Um, not only can you use the white part of the quahog shell, but often the whelk, the inner core of the whelk and conch shells, the uh, spiral center, were also used to make those white beads. Um, so the actual wampum would often be the white bead. Uh, the suquahog is what you're looking at today. The purple part, uh, this piece here, shows you really good the, the veins that flow through, also showing the age of the quahog. But uh, yeah, this word, quahog, comes from our word suquahog. And that's what we use to describe this dark shell. Um, some say the purple was more valuable than the white. Um, a lot of Europeans and even some modern contemporary Americans today, historians and whatnot, uh, they all refer to wampum in a form of currency. It was never considered money. It was always valuable. When you take a resource from the ocean, not only are you able to nourish your body with it and your family most likely, but to turn a brittle shell such as this into small intricate beads, beads that were often assembled into long strands before they were given to their chief. Uh, a chief would not really be able to do much with just one or two beads. So you would have to give at least an entire strand of these wampum beads to your leader. When you gave them to the leader, the leader would then take them and transform them into a belt, a sash, possibly headband, uh, bracelets, uh, armbands of different sorts, all of which illustrate his people's history. Um, so when you think of the Bible, when you think of the Constitution, these are valuable documents that people keep in secured areas. The climate of those rooms has to be monitored because they don't want to degrade the quality of these documents. Well, our wampum belts are the very same documentation of our history. Uh, we didn't write our words down, we illustrated our stories with the designs and the patterns that were made once we assembled the small beads made from this quahog shell. So when you want to put a value to the wampum, it's easily done, but you have to think of the time and effort that it took using the tools at the time that were available to make something so brittle into a very sh shiny, tubular, almost perfectly round bead. And then of course you have to drill the center of that bead out. And that's just one bead. You have to make many of these, as I said, before you can even give them to your leader, before they can actually use them in a manner to illustrate their people's history. So yes, the time is what we valued. Um, the resource itself is pretty limited. Um, you can only find it in the New England area. Um, throughout this region, we used wampum. The trade network stretched at least as far west to the Great Lakes region, up and down the coastline uh, to the Carolinas and into Canada. Um, people used wampum. And they all valued the resource. Not everyone could get it themselves. So it was a really good uh, commodity for those of us who were coastal people to obtain things that we needed from the inland communities and vice versa. Um, but this wampum, most importantly, was used to document our history. Our history goes back thousands of years and was never written in a, a literate form. Uh, we didn't use the Roman alphabet to write down our words or our stories. So when you think of our artwork, when you think of uh, the designs on our clothing, it tells you a lot about who we are. And the wampum was one of the best ways to illustrate our history for our people. Uh, these massive belts would be displayed before communities while the entire story was recited before the community so that they could understand all the elements of the story which were captured in these illustrations, the designs and patterns that made up these belts. Uh, many of these belts are no longer with us, particularly the Wampanoag people. Um, they were obtained after wars and uh, battles that took place here. Um, when the belts were surrendered, many of them were turned over to the king, but the king reports that he did not get many of them. So we cannot go and observe some of these uh, important parts of our history that still capture quite a bit of our story. Um, so we are still interested in obtaining those belts to gain back a good piece of our own history. 
Um, but these belts will last a long time because these quahog shells, they do not degrade like uh, some other materials such as wood and other objects that we also put our stories on. So wherever you go, you're going to find native artwork. Um, sometimes their clothing alone can be considered artwork. But it's all a form of capturing a story, sometimes about the individual artist, maybe it's about the community, maybe it's about the culture as a whole. But um, we do value all of our artwork, not just the wampum shells from the ocean.